Today I'm going to quickly show you how to create a website, sync it with GitHub, sync it with GitHub desktop, and basically make changes to your website using a text editor on your desktop and, uh, you know, um, commit those changes to GitHub. So let's do it really quickly. This is really made for newbies and, and people that haven't used GitHub before. It's totally intimidating. Most of the stuff is written by you know, programmers and people that want to sound like programmers. So it's overly complex. It's really pretty easy once you break it down to the simple things. What you'll need today to do this, and you might want to hit pause if you haven't done it yet, is you will need to go to html5boilerplate.com and download the boilerplate. It's 87 kilobytes. It's tiny. You'll need to set up a GitHub account, which uh, you'll go to github.com and create an account. And you may, just to save time, want to search Google and download the GitHub desktop app. All right, let's get started. I have a brand new GitHub account here. I have no uh, projects going on. And uh, I want to create a website. And I've heard that I can host it on GitHub. How do I do that? Perfect. First things first, we're going to hit start a project, and we've got these different, you know, repository names, etc. But there's a trick: if you name your repository, your username, and then GitHub.io, this uh, becomes like a website, basically project, and GitHub lets you treat it as a website, and you basically have a free server space, so to speak. So let's hit create repository. All right. All right. So, the next step. Let um I this is just a bunch of boilerplate from them. Next step. Download GitHub desktop. Nothing to really do here, so we're just going to go away from that. Once it's downloaded, this is GitHub desktop, I don't know, as of late January 2018, it just changed on me, so I'm kind of new to this interface, so if I get clunky here. The first thing you need to do is log in. So we'll go here, preferences, yada, 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 uh, github.com, let's sign in. Sign in. All right, let's make sure we're actually signed in before I go further. All right. Now, let's go to clone a repository. We've created a repository on the website, even though there's nothing in it. Let's clone that sucker. So we'll go here, and it lists all of our repositories. We only have I only have one right now. You might have 15. I don't know. But you've probably only created one if you're new to this. So let's select that. All right, this destination already exists. That's because I was goofing around earlier. Don't worry. Local path. This is important. Where do you want to store this on your machine? Where do you want to be editing your web files? And as we'll see in the next video, I'm going to show you that you should be uh, saving it in your local host, your web, your local web server. Fortunately, with the program MAMP and most most local web servers, you can change which fo folder on your computer acts as that web server. So find a folder you like that's convenient that you know you'll be able to remember, um, and uh, go for it. Mm. You guys are busting me here. I already have one. Well, let's try this. I'll do desktop. All right, I'm going to hit clone. Awesome. Hey, it's blank. Nothing's going on. That's because this user interface is a little obscure. Uh, if we hit history, there's nothing there. But as we can see, we have the... Um, we definitely have the current repository. It's synced. And let's see what happens if we change the folder I just created. So let's go back to desktop. Put it between the owl's eyes here. I'm going to double click into this. There's nothing in here. Perfect. This is where the boilerplate thing comes in. Let's go back to the browser. Remember I told you about HTML5 boilerplate? Download it, please. In your downloads, it'll come downloaded as a zip. Unzip that sucker, and then without selecting the folder, select everything in the folder. And you'll notice there's an index file, which acts as a home page on any website. So we're going to, uh, I forgot, yeah, copy 15 items. Should be 15, at least in late January. 
We'll go back to desktop. We'll click on our GitHub folder here. Click in it. Hit paste. All right. Now let's go back to GitHub desktop. Oh my gosh, what just happened? Look at this. Immediately we get all these changes. Every document we just pasted in there, we can see in GitHub. This is awesome. Okay, so here's what we have to do now. Every time you commit or make a change that's saved to any GitHub project, you have to give a little summary and description, a summary name, so to speak. So I'm going to write, let there be light, first commit of otherwise empty website, entirely HTML5 boilerplate. And then I'm going to click Commit to Master. Um, all right. Default branch. I'm hitting Publish. It's pushing. Total 32 edits. All right. Bunch of jazz. Whatever. Let's go check out what, if anything, changed on the, our GitHub account, which would be the most important thing. And voila, look at this. So I went right back to the GitHub page, and now we have um, our website here. It takes a while for the website to show up. Um, GitHub doesn't update constantly. Well, I guess it didn't take that long. So we now have a website. Get this. It's on Git. We have a folder here with our website so we can edit it on our on our um, here I'll open this with brackets right now and, and tweak it what the hey I'll close brackets and then let's go to github desktop all right we'll go here changes one file's been changed First edition added one line from boilerplate. Commit to master. All right. Let's go here. Hit refresh. There it is. It's definitely been updated online. It might take a while for it to show up here, but that's fine. Um, that's how you update GitHub. Our GitHubs are synced. We have a folder. We have boilerplate. Let's rock and roll. Thanks for watching.